to inject our sample of protein into this valve to store it in this sample loop before we tell this machine to go and direct the liquid onto the column for our size exclusion chromatography run. So we're going to inject it into this port, but we need to actually make sure that the needle's clean. We need to make sure that the loop is clean and that the loop is filled with the buffer that we want. So what we're first going to do is just wash the, wash the needle. And so this is just a reusable syringe. You can also use like a Hamilton syringe. In that case, you wouldn't be putting any one of these in. If you have a bigger size one, you can actually have uh, like twist things on. But when you have this, this one mil syringe, you just push it in here. But first, what you're gonna wanna actually do is you're gonna wanna wash it. And so typically what I do is I do a couple of washes with 20% ethanol. Anything that you put onto the Acta, you wanna make sure is filtered. And so typically, like, I just wanna go the first one, I'm just gonna go in and then I'm gonna push it through and into the waste. Now you can actually do it up through the needle as well. I just like to do it like once out through the needle before I do this. And now I'm gonna wash the needle with the ethanol a couple times. And now we'll go ahead and go through the water. Okay, and so now the next thing I want to do is I want to actually wash the pump with the water. So, I mean, wash the loop with the water. So we're using a 500 microliter loop. And so you typically want to do like at least two, two loop volumes or two or three loop volumes through the loop. But first we need to make sure that we're actually set to inject through the loop. And so if we come over to here, so this is our unicorn system control. If we go here, we can see the injection valve setting, and right now we're set to manual load, which tells us that when we pump, in, when we inject into the syringe port, it's going to fill the loop, and any excess is going to go into the waste. So we should be pushing in. We're going to be pushing in like a mill of this in through here, and then about half of it should stay in there, and half the first half should go out. And so we're going to do this with water, and then we'll do it with buffer, and then we'll go ahead and be ready for our sample. And so. We're just going to draw up a little over a mil. I guess a mil is all it'll let me do. Sometimes it'll let you do a little over. And then I'm just going to inject this into the loop. So I want to make sure I'm just going straight into the port. And I'm just going to gently push. You don't want to apply too much pressure, but it should just go easily. If it's not going easily, if you feel something jammed, then that's an indicator that something's wrong. It might be that there's a problem in your needle and that the needle's kind of worked. You want to make sure that when you have your needle in there, you're kind of like being careful and not banging it around. It's best if you have some sort of little holder underneath. So we're going to try like 3D printing a little holder that you can stick to hold the needle so that it's not just waving around. Okay, so we washed it with the water, and now though we want to put buffer in it because the buffer is going to be what we want our protein to be encountering and chased with, and because the stuff that's in the loop now is going to go onto the column. And so we want, but before we let it go onto the column, we want to make sure that it's buffer in the loop that is going onto the column. And then our protein will go on, and then the buffer will chase our protein through to make sure that all of our protein gets out. And so that was the water. And now we're going to take some of our buffer and again like all of this is really important that you filter your, your fluids before you stick them in because you don't want them to clog some of the like after you do the injection you don't want the needle to clog too and so it's important that you actually then go and uh, wash the needle after your run but you don't want to remove the needle during the run and so I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to inject, but this time I'm doing buffer. And so now I'm filling that loop with the buffer. So now the loop should be filled with the buffer. And now it's time to fill it with our protein. So we're just going to take it directly out of here, but we don't want to touch the membrane of the concentrator. So when you're doing size inclusion, it's really important that your protein is concentrated because 
it's not going to get stuck on the column in a loop, so it's going to, uh, you want it to be as concentrated as possible to get as good a resolution as possible. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I don't want to touch the membrane though. I just want to go like up and down a couple times to really make sure it's mixed. And then I'm going to pull up. I'm just going to pull up a little over half a uh, mil because right now we just want to inject more. Because we didn't, we didn't concentrate enough, so... Uh, but if you have a small amount of volume, then you would kind of want to be more careful. And then after you pull it up, you can kind of turn it upside down and squirt a little out and make sure that you don't have uh, that you. Because when you often when you're trying to get the very bottom of things out, you're going to pull up until there's a little more air than here. And this, then you can come over here and you can kind of just tap it and then push until a little comes out. And yes, you waste a little, but you uh, make sure that you're avoiding having too many bubbles. Now what you're going to do is you're going to come over here and you're going to just go and direct back into the port. Push in. And this time I'm just going to leave it in. So carefully leave it in so I'm not warping the needle, but you don't want to pull it out. It'll help, um, it'll keep it, when you, if you pull it out with the protein, it'll kind of, the fluid dynamics will make things weird. And so you don't want to do that. And so you just want to leave it in there during the run. And then after the run, what you want to do is come and you're going to do ethanol washes of the needle before you store the needle so that you don't have it get crusty stuff in the needle. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do change it to a different setting and so I'm just going to do it to like system pump waste and that way it's just like not doing anything with that with that syringe valve um, and so it's or, or the sample loop and so it's not technically necessary I don't think according to the Cytiva people but I'm just a little uh, paranoid about that so I'm like okay let's just bypass that entirely until we go and tell the machine to go and actually inject it. So we were in this manual load where we are adding it from the syringe into the loop. When it goes to inject, it's adding it from the system pump, which is going to have our buffer through the loop. And then it's going to go onto the column. Whereas when we had it in the manual load, it was going, um, we had it going into the waste, the extra. When we have inject, we'll have it go onto the column, but we'll also not be going directly from the syringe, but going directly from the system line. But for now, we're just going to set it to system pump waste. And so now our samp our and so now our thing is ready for us to go and start our run. And so we're just going to open up our method. And so we have this method. So we're just going to discard the results of the manual run that was just us finishing our equilibration. We have our method here. We have our frat. We have it set. I have the method set so that it'll show us the fraction collector, and so it knows that we have a plate there. We have all of this already set with our parameters that we want. So you can see that it's going to be doing 0.75 mils um, per fraction, and the flow rate and all this stuff. We are going to now tell it where we want to save things. And so we're just going to add, we're just going to add what this is. So I always like to, so never put like spaces in your names. And so this is just going to be underscore. And then this is going to be our SAP, MDH, and then the date. And then we're, I just save these in our like SEC runs. We're going to do start. And so we'll see that it's doing its system-y, process-y type things. It freaks you out a little because it looks like it's doing things with your sample, but it's not. It's just kind of setting the system. So if you come and look at the run log, you can see what's going on. And so it issued the, the pressure limit so it doesn't um, mess things up. It's now going to be washing the injection valve. And then we should see it switch to being in the, um, to be going from the sample A. So from the A line, this is our, one of our system lines. This is our system pumps, and this is the sample pump. We're not using the sample pump right now, 
that we use the sample pump if we have a larger volume and so then we have the, the tubes just like we have a tube into the buffer lines we can have a tube into the sample which would then pull it up but that's if you want bigger volumes and right now we have a small volume but now we can see that the flow path is going from a and it's going in and it's going to go it's bypassing the loop right now so it's not going in the loop it's got the valve in the set in the setting that it's going to just basically go into here and through here and avoid this loop what you want to do is watch the uv and watch the conductivity make sure that it's stable so we had just manually equilibrated it so we know that it's really stable but to, sometimes too in the very beginning there's like a little bit of a work just when it's setting things up then i like to get it so it's like nice and stable so that it does a good baseline absorbance um, subtraction and you don't have a weird um, baseline once i see that everything's kind of going good now i'm going to go ahead and actually tell it to push it out of the loop and onto the column so what I can do is if I come over here, I um, what I can do is I come over here, I go to manual, execute manual instructions, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to other, next breakpoint. That's gonna tell it to go to the next step in our run. And so the next step in the run is for it to actually go and inject our sample. So I'm gonna insert and execute this. We come over here, and now we should see that there was, um, it switches to going from our from here directly through to it's actually now it's going to the loop so it switched to being in this injection valve inject inject mode and now it's basically going to be injecting and so it's going to go a mil and a half through through the loop and so we told it to go basically a mil more than our loop volume so that it's gonna push out whatever is after our sample. It's gonna push all of our sample out of the loop and onto the column. And then it'll switch back to that typical mode where it's going to be, um, so it'll be, right now it's going in this inject mode where it's going into the, so this is the system pump, it's going through there, taking our stuff onto the column. It'll then go with a little more to push all our stuff on, all onto the column and then it'll switch back to just being the, from the system pump through to the column. We have our needle still in there. We're gonna leave our needle still in there until the end of the run. As soon as the run's done, we can wash our needle with the ethanol, just do the few ethanol washes just like we did before so we don't get crusty stuff in there. We'll wanna wash our loop again too, and then we will want to save our protein fractions from wherever they are. And now we just wait. So we're not collecting fractions yet because we're in that void volume. And so we told it not to start collecting fractions until like 4.7 or something mils after it does the injection step. And the injection step includes the injection and then the post chase. But right now we're out of that mode. And so now we kind of like start the, start the 4.5. And you can see here's our fraction mark. And now we just wait and watch. It's so gratifying to be able to pay it forward and teach my students how to do protein purification. So Liam and Karina and Alice were with me in the lab yesterday and I got to give them their first experience using an ACTA. And we got some protein that we're going to run some cool experiments with next week. And huge thanks to Alice for videotaping this so that we could They'll be building up our kind of lab repository of protocols and videos and things so that the BBL lab members in the future can look back on these and be able to learn these techniques and review these techniques even when I'm not right there with them.